Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, here's Van Amsen. Today we are going to uh, solve another daily elliptical challenge number 2369. Check if there is a valid partition for the array. So, okay, let's dive in. Our task today uh, is to resolve around determining whether we can partition an array into valid subarray based on a couple of uh, rules. So, uh, here are the rules. So for example, a valid subarray can have two identical uh, numbers. So for example, two and two. Uh, also, uh, it can have only three identical elements. So for example, four, four and four. And also, uh, it could be increasing. So for example, three, four, uh, five. Uh, okay. Uh, so, now, uh, when we understand uh, it, uh, let's dive into example. So, given uh, example uh, 1, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, uh, we uh, can partition it uh, into 1, 1 subarray and also into subarray of 2, 3, 4. So uh, it's valid because uh, this is uh, two same elements and uh, those elements are uh, increasing. So now when we understand the task, uh, let's start by setting up our function. So we have a valid uh, partition and we take a list of numbers, uh, nums as input. And first let's tackle the edge cases. So if our array has only one, uh, number, it's impossible uh, to create a valid partition. So we immediately return false because we need to, at least uh, two elements. So n len num. And if the array has only one element, then no possible to partition into value sub array. So it will be if n one return false simple edge case and then initialize initialize for the first three values so dp true false num0 equals num1 and if <coughs> n greater than 1 else false okay so now uh, for uh, the dynamic programming part, we will use a window approach with three states, dp0, uh, dp1, and dp2. And these states represent the validity of the partition up to indices i-2, i-1, and i uh, respectively. So we will initialize them with true, false, and check for the first two numbers uh, being uh, equal. So if they are not, we uh, have false. Uh, so, all right, before we continue, let's take a deeper look uh, at our dynamic programming approach. So you might be wondering, why uh, are we using an RIDP with just three states? And what do these states actually uh, represent? So we have, mm, dp0, dp1, and dp2. Uh, represent the validity of those uh, partition as mentioned before, uh, up to indices i uh, minus 2, i minus 1, and uh, to i respectively. And dp0 uh, uh, checks uh, the validity of two steps back. So if uh, we are uh, considering, uh, for example, three consecutive numbers or three identical numbers, we need to know if the partition up to i minus two uh, was uh, valid. So uh, it's for uh, this case and this case. So with three elements. And dp1 checks the validity of one uh, step back. So 
uh, as we can see, at, uh, it's essentially uh, when we are considering pairs of uh, numbers. So if the current number and the previous one form a valid uh, pair uh, and the partition up to i minus one was valid, then our current partition is also uh, valid. So uh, it will go to uh, two uh, checking number. And also we have uh, dp2, so the last one, and this is our current state and it tells us uh, whether the partition up to the current index i is valid uh, or uh, not. So now let's dive into loops. So for i in range 2 to n, current dp will be false. And check for two equal elements. So two equal elements will be if num i, num i minus, minus one. So those two elements are equal and also dp one as mentioned before. And current dp will be true. And then we check for three equal elements. So it will be else and if i minus two greater than zero and num i num i minus two. So all three elements, so i, i minus one, i minus two are equal and dp uh, zero. And current dp will be also true. And last state check for three consecutive increasing elements. So else if i greater than zero and num i num i. So uh, now the difference equal one and the second difference is also equal uh, one and uh, dp zero is also valid as mentioned before. So and finally move the window forward. So here is our uh, rolling window and dp0, dp1 and dp2. We slide it dp1, dp2 and our current dp. And finally we return dp2 as mentioned uh, because it's up to index i. So but why only three uh, states? Well our uh, problem consists uh, constraint focus uh, only on pairs and uh, triplets of uh, numbers. And we have uh, three states. So this means that at any given index, we only need to look at the current number and at most the two uh, preceding uh, ones. So thus we don't need to remember the validity of partition beyond uh, i minus two, uh, making uh, a longer dp array are just uh, unnecessary. So by sliding uh, this window forward at every step, we efficiently capture the essence of the problem while avoiding also the overhead of uh, tracking to uh, much past uh, information that are just uh, unnecessary. Uh, also, it's possible to solve it using uh, a modulo rather than uh, sliding windows, but uh, I have tested so uh, with sliding windows, it's a bit uh, faster than referring to, for example, uh, modulo uh, four in our uh, array and not sliding it. So uh, if the current number uh, equals the previous one and dp uh, one is true, we have a valid partition up to this point. And if the current uh, number and the uh, two before, uh, before are identical and also our state uh, dp0 is true, uh, it's still valid. And if they form a consecutive increasing sequence, uh, so, uh, and also we have a dp0 uh, uh, 
looking back uh, for uh, triplets uh, is okay. So we are all good and we uh, continue with current DP as true. So now after checking each scenario, we slide uh, our window forward by updating the DP states. And once we done looping, DP2 uh, will just uh, tell us uh, if entire array can be partitioned uh, and whether it's valid. So we return this state. So now let's uh, see if it's working for this given test case. Yeah, all good. Uh, so now let's see for unseen test cases. So yeah, they were a bit tricky, but basically we have uh, solved it and our implementation beat 89% with respect to runtime and also 78% with respect to uh, memory. So as you can see, uh, it's quite uh, efficient and yeah, very intuitive solution and there you have it, a neat solution using dynamic programming and sliding window. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe uh, for more uh, coding uh, challenges, tutorials, and much more uh, with tech and programming. And uh, for those of you who are interested in other programming languages implementation, like C++, Go, Rust, Java, C Sharp, and uh, JavaScript, uh, check the description below. And before we wrap up, uh, remember coding challenges uh, are not just about finding a solution, but understanding the logic behind it. And most importantly, keep practicing, happy coding, and see you next time.